here's a request to researchers and poll takers and marketers everywhere. Stop using the lexicon of addiction to describe the use of a technology. Yeah, I'm going to get a little Andy Rooney on you again, with maybe just a little side of Courtney Love for some extra spice. The source of this fresh bile is a study out of no less an authority than Stanford University, which tells us iPhone users are addicted to the darn things. Are they snorting them? Injecting them? That can't be good. What we do know is that the anthropology department surveyed 200 students, 70% of whom had owned their iPhones for less than a year. Quote, when asked to rank their dependence on the iPhone on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being addicted and 1 being not at all addicted, 10% of the students acknowledged full addiction to the device, 34% ranked themselves as a 4 on the scale, and only 6% said they weren't addicted at all. Many of these same Sanford students went on to say they'd be lost without their iPhones. Now, I don't know if they meant lost like morally untethered lost or more like, oh crap, my GPS app isn't working, can I look at yours lost? Not that it matters. In the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, or DSM, Every Shrink's Most Trusted Tome, any entry about addiction asks whether it negatively impacts the rest of your life in any way. I don't think that's what these students are describing. I think what they're describing is something compulsive and maybe a little whack, but addictive. Only somebody who's never been addicted to a substance, whether it's gambling or shopping or prescription drugs, or been around someone who's addicted, would be this cavalier in describing behavior this way. And it's not just iPhone users tossing this kind of language around either. We're now being treated to internet addiction facilities like Restart in Washington State. Maybe that's an actual diagnosable condition. I'll leave that to the experts for now. All I want to say is, my name is Terry, and I am not an iPhone-aholic.